Hello, this is Anna's Homestead, and this is take five of the same video. <laughs> it's just not happening. I had a friend that I met on Alaska Purpose channel and ran into on so many multiple other channels in the comment section that actually we became friends because of that. And this was Flash Franck Prepping. Well, it seems that in the last week he has created his own video channel. He's just started his YouTube channel. And one of his recent videos was a prepper daily mentality. And in this video, he ponders what do others do on a smaller scale of prepping? You know, what's their day like? What do you do the night before? Do you set up tasks? Like maybe even for the weekend? I attempted to leave a comment, at least in support of this video contribution. And this is how it began. It began, I cannot address an answer to such a question about my prepping day, or about how my prepping day or days go without doing an entire video series. But it was a very good topic and a very good question. And I intended to stop there. But I felt obligated to say more. And, and before I knew it, I'd written a book. So, with that in mind, um, I expounded on it so that I wouldn't be just repeating my comment. So, here it goes. I have some serious disabilities, so I prepare on a daily basis for even simple tasks in advance. Be it making coffee in the morning, or doing all my dishes constantly. I will be able to prepare a meal at a moment's notice with all my tools available. And the reason for this is that there's a chance that I'll be too ill to function because it can change on a dime without warning for me. For these same reasons, I'm also constantly planning years ahead for how I will earn an income when, say, I no longer have Social Security. Because, let's face it, it can come out from underneath any of us at any time. My disability, I've been legally declared unable to work due to my heart or brain can suddenly fail at any moment. I was hospitalized for a week to 10 days actually back in 19 well back in 2010 and um, if your oxygen falls below 100 from 100 percent to below 67 percent you cannot be released so they kept me for 10 days trying to stabilize my oxygen they finally did a deep arterial uh, blood gas exchange Mine was 40%. If it drops to 30%, your heart and your brain, your internal organs, even your skin as an organ, they simply just die. They cannot function if you're getting less than 30% oxygen. Let me also tell you that if you're getting less than 30% oxygen, you're also not getting any nutrition to those organs. None of those body cells are thriving. They're all starving. So, it's been told to me though, that I don't have to worry about organ failures of my digestive tract or my liver. Because it'll be my heart that's going to eventually kill me. It'll be the most sensitive of them all. This diagnosis was in January of 2010. I don't think they expected me to live more than another few months. But I have a few types of loose medical backgrounds in my lifetime. And these, I applied them to myself. I began my own rehabilitation. But it wasn't a physical go out and exercise type of rehabilitation, which I thought a year or two ago that it was to a point where I could attempt to start doing that. But when I say attempt to start doing that, I'm talking about going and sitting in the garden with a cup of coffee watching the sunrise on a milk crate and pulling weeds for five or ten minutes while I sip a coffee. I'm talking about that being a work day. I know you know. You're thinking, what? But that's really about all I can handle. 
you know, and maybe if I was lucky and in a situation where I wasn't in city pollution, I currently live by a freeway and these things really affect me bad. Several chicken plants, um, there's a diesel truck place that stores huge amounts of diesel fuel to reload diesel trucks. I mean, I'm talking to reload tanker trucks. And I don't, you probably don't know too much about those chemicals, but um, I do. And those are going to touch on some of my views on animal feeds later on. So they're going to tie in to something that I am deeply concerned about and another reason I want to homestead. <coughs> when they did finally release me from the hospital on oxygen, because obviously no one can be kept there forever. I will say that a few of the nurses did try to force my release to a nursing home situation. Lucky for me, several doctors stuck up for me and said I was quite capable of caring for myself. They'd have murdered me had I been in a nursing home. Let me tell you, I couldn't have ate that food. I couldn't have been forced to, to go with that cigarette. I couldn't have been forced to go to bed at a specific hour and lay there even if I couldn't sleep and let me tell you I could not lay down I could not um, if I lay down I started to drown and choke and I couldn't breathe it, it was bad for years for years I was like that for years um, I would cough up fluid like a quarter cup half eighth of a cup to a quarter cup of fluid each time I coughed for hours, I was not fit for public. I mean, you know, I wouldn't have wanted anybody even around me to see that. It was just so horrible. And that was due to heart failure. That's why my lungs were so full of fluid. It's because I was starving for a long time because I've been homeless. And I'm like, you know, people think everybody gets food stamps. Well, guess what? I couldn't get them. And I continued to deteriorate really bad. And how I got in that situation, um, I quit a job while I was out of state, and <clears throat> I thought I could go and be rehired by about anybody, because so I thought I had a really good work history at that point because of that job. But let me tell you, I was wrong, and it turned out that during the two or three years I worked for that company, my driver's license had expired, so because of 9-11, so many things had changed without a authorized certified copy of my birth certificate which happened to be in California and I was in Tennessee it could not be obtained without a credit card without a 3x5 uh, blown up copy of a government identification um, it had to go back to an address that someone could sign for it it had to be shipped Federal Express only. There were so many details to it that a homeless person could not do. And it also cost about $117 to do. It wasn't like you could just walk into the county health department and slap down $15 to $17. Not with my birth certificate. It wasn't going to work. So I couldn't get my driver's license renewed. And there wasn't a labor ready that would allow me to work. I could not get a junky job at a labor ready for even a day to have the money to eat or to pay for a new ID. I had to get that birth certificate. Uh, it, it was terrible and I ended up in a really bad downward spiral. And I had no friends or family. For now at this time it's been 21 years. And it just, it, there was nowhere to turn. I know you see people on street corners and they're holding signs, begging money. And then people are making 120 something dollars a day. But I can tell you, I wouldn't have asked you for 10 cents for nothing. I wouldn't ask for a dollar to buy a soda. It's just me. I wouldn't ask. <clears throat> so I hid out in the woods. And I ate at the supposed time kitchens that are supposed to provide a meal for the homeless but what I can tell you the horror stories about the food there is just you wouldn't believe me if they served you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich they microwaved the peanut butter and when it was a consistency of water 
They basically took a paintbrush and painted a circle in the center of the bread. There was no peanut butter on there, just a painted circle to make it look the color of peanut butter on the bread. And they put another bread on it, and out the door they sent you with it. And that was like, for Saturday, that was supposed to last you, um, on Saturdays and Sundays, that was supposed to last you for lunch and dinner. And it came with a tiny bag of chips and a Diet Coke, which meant that you got no calories, no sugar, nothing. You had no energy at all, other than you were fed two slices of bread. So basically, yeah, yeah you were bread and water. <clears throat> Only except for that water was cancer-causing water because it's full of aspartame. Or whatever the label sugar happened to be. Substitute. So yeah, I digested all the muscles in my body until I was near death. It's funny because everybody thought I had a respiratory disease and that whatever it was, it was really bad and that I was going to die. And, um, turns out the whole time it was our only starvation. Basically, pretty much had quashed York or my, my stomach swelled up just like quashed York or victims look. Um, they say it doesn't happen in America. Well, I mean, it's not true. It does happen to people. It's just that when you all look at them, you think that those homeless people are fat because they don't work and all they do is eat. Or you think that it's because they're alcoholics and their, their guts are swollen because they have liver problems. But I'm going to tell you this, a lot of them are flat out starving. Yeah, they probably drink too, but, but they're starving. And they're laid up so drunk they don't even know it anymore. They don't know anything's wrong with them. 25 of them would die every year in just the city I live in, and, and, you know, I stood in lines with these people in A for a number of years, till I started figuring out that I was getting sick, and, and that it was giving me diarrhea, and there really wasn't much on the plate that you could eat, um, you could taste the beans and they might taste sour, you could smell the bread, and, you know, at least you had bread to eat, right, but guess what? You could smell the bread if you didn't see mold. If you didn't see mold and you smelled the bread, it smelled like dirty feet because it was on the verge of mold or it had some kind of a mold in it. Um, it is what it is. I even once had soured powdered milk served there with cereal one morning. And the only reason I noticed was is that I took a sip of it before I put cereal in it because I was really super thirsty. And it was spoiled. How do you spoil sour powdered milk? Well, let me tell you. They used to take this powdered milk and they would mix it in hot water and then leave it set on the counter. Yeah. They would boil water to make because it mixed easier. And then they didn't keep it cool in time and it would rot and sour. I had a worker there who told me that on a Friday they would put like three large chicken or turkeys in, in the big sinks and on Monday morning they'd still be laying out there in the big sinks. Three days later, yep. Then they cooked them and served them. Not just for one day, but over a period of days because they served them with rice or with noodles and you would think, wow, you know, y'all getting some great turkey meat, but let me tell you something. If you picked the turkey out of the serving that they gave you, you wouldn't find one teaspoon of meat. Tops. You got about a teaspoon of meat at a meal. That's it. This is why I didn't get enough protein and I digested my muscles. <clears throat> um, you think, okay, it's okay. You could get seconds. Oh, no. You were not allowed seconds. But they would take a 30-gallon garbage can, two of them out after a meal, and throw that in a dumpster. But they would not give it to you to eat. Yeah, that's the truth. Can't count the number of turkeys we used to watch going out the back door to private citizens. Yeah, the donations that were supposed to be for the homeless. Big screen TVs went out on Sundays mm -hmm, out of the thrift store. It was not uncommon to see. And those were with people in suits. So those were the higher up people that worked there. That wasn't the low, lower, low poverty people that had a job there. So I don't know where I'm at in this 
eight pages that I hand wrote, but maybe sometime. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know where I jumped off. But they did release me from the hospital. The doctors did stick up for me and say I could care for myself. I was supposed to have 24 hours a week in home nursing assistance with daily tasks. I never received that. At the time all that happened to me, I was in fact still homeless. As a matter of fact, within two weeks of being released from the hospital to stay in somebody's apartment, um, I resumed living back outdoors in a wooded area where I continued to stealth camp from January 2010 through November 3rd, 2010, at which time I secured the apartment I still live in nearly eight years later. Maybe sometime I'll share how I dealt with various stages, various stages of those eight years, how different prepping methods served me well. But for now, let's jump ahead to summer 2018. And I know I mentioned to you that uh, a person's social security could be gone, you know, for a disabled person at any moment. Mine was gone for a different reason this summer. I recently lost my disability income because I was told I received an inheritance income that was over $2,500. I was told when I have less than $2,500, I will be able to restart the application process as if I'd never been previously approved. And I got a letter from them today and that sum of money is actually $2,000, but it does have a couple of exceptions to it. I can own a home and I can own one vehicle and those won't count against me getting a disability income again somewhere down the road but first I'll have to be broke for less than two thousand dollars and the process usually takes about three years to get started so during that time I won't be able to make tags and uh, registration on my vehicle or vehicle insurance or property taxes and I would likely lose everything that I invest in everything that's in my home all my dishes my clothing I would probably lose all of that if I were to try to go for a disability reinstatement I would probably be homeless again on the street with nothing. When I moved into this apartment, the only thing I owned was what well, I was inside of a backpack. I walked into this apartment empty and sat on the floor and slept on the floor. I actually went and got a couple of couch cushions uh, uh, off a thrown, off, thrown out couch and uh, I slept on those for a while for a bit. Actually, somebody broke into my house. This is a true story how I got my glass coffee cups. A guy broke into my house and I was coming home one day. And this girl, um, she said to him, Why haven't you robbed her yet? And he said, She ain't got nothing. And it wasn't a day or two later, I heard my screen door downstairs. And when I went down later and looked, there was um, two plastic shopping bags. You know, regular grocery store bags. And in them were um, some glass coffee cups that the guy later on told me that they used to belong to his mother before she had passed. And um, they were actually, I guess, meant for a punch hole set. You know, like the old ladies have punch hole sets. But um, yeah, eight years later, I'm still drinking out of those same coffee cups. As a matter of fact, to this day, I own one spoon, one fork, and two butter knives. But don't get me wrong now, I got an extensive Tupperware collection that I bought. I got a deep fryer, computerized uh, crock pot, you know, um, I've got some nice things. Make no mistake about it. I've got a glass dishware set because I decided that um, they're always going to match. If there's solid clear glass, they're always going to match. So it doesn't look like junk is not a set. So, um, I have to think where I'm at now. I need to move on. So, I've said it would take years, if ever, to get a disability claim through again. And so, it's going to come down to what I invest in. But then, I don't even want to touch that just yet. I want to say something about YouTube, but YouTube is a potential avenue open to me because I'm unable to work. It could provide an income for me three or four years from now. 
and it doesn't have to be a big one like some of these guys. I know there's one construction worker. He's making 33000 a year now off of YouTube, just ads from, from views he gets. And he's quit his job. And he doesn't see any shame in it. And I'm not saying that there should be, but I'm saying I'm a disabled person and I cannot work. And before somebody tells me it's shameful of me that I shouldn't want to have a channel and to try to earn income from my channel, I do not think that I need to be ashamed for, for planning for my future and to choosing YouTube as a source of a way for a disabled person like myself to do so. I do know that there's another channel out there that has many different sources from Patreon to selling um, courses. As a matter of fact, there's several that have that are on Patreon and selling courses. But there's one individual that in fact is making $244,000 a year just off of view ad revenue. So don't let them fool you. Now I don't expect to ever grow that big because, you know, I um, can't do all these flashy things that they're doing. And I have no intention of attempting to. All I need to do is make some basic bills. And I don't need that for four years. So I have plenty of time to grow. And there's billions of people on this planet who watch just about anything. Some of the largest YouTube channels are in fact um, people testing toys around the world. Matter of fact, those channels aren't even in America. They're in places like India. India has some of the largest YouTube channel incomes. So, what I say is, is, uh, there's one woman in Cat in California, and she quit her job, and what she does is she does Minecraft. Lowe's Weekend even came out and remodeled her studio where she films her YouTube channel. All, all she does is play Minecraft, nothing else. So I'm not going to feel ashamed. I don't intend to bag, I don't intend to do t-shirts. I couldn't think of what in the world the t-shirt would be. But I'm just not interested. I'm not interested in a lot of gimmicks. I'm just not. I can't say I'd never do a t-shirt, but I'm just really... I'm not into gimmicks, I'm not into free giveaways, I'm, you know, I'm into um, some companionship, sharing what I do, and I think that what I do is going to be unique in a lot of ways from other homesteading channels, because one, I bring different things to the table in the way of skills than a lot of the others have. I. Um, I'm disabled. I am a single female. I will be doing this alone. Uh, I do intend to incorporate some primitive technology because I really like using the local rocks and wood that are available. I like woven fences. I like cobblestone walkways. I like the idea of, uh, you know, the, I've seen some of the mud houses that some of the primitive channels have made. And I don't see why you couldn't use something like that for a goat shelter. I think it's just cool as could be. Okay, it's probably not very stable, you know. So, hey, you know, so reinforce it with something. You know? But even even if it was made with some um, ready-mixed concrete and, and just property rocks, I think it would be lovely. Um... So for me though, my plans, whatever I invest in, I'm likely going to lose during that waiting period if I attempt to reinstate disability. So this is why YouTube seems to be a viable alternative for me. My plans do have to be very right on and carefully planned. And I must include as many years of living on the money that I already have towards the rest of my lifetime. But investing in a homestead, if it's the wrong one, it can be a financial trap or even a house risk for me. I know we see some people living in off-grid situations, but the truth is many of them are living on borrowed time before they're caught. It's in fact illegal to live in many of those conditions. They can actually be trespassed for occupying their own property and they can be fined and eventually their property can be sold from out from under them to pay those fines. 
if you think it hasn't happened yet, you haven't spent the three years preparation and research that I did. I did it because my life will depend on it. Because there's no second chance if I misspend. There's no income to bail me out. So finding a homestead piece of property that'll provide me with a legal occupancy and yet also some off-grid capabilities that I think are going to be necessary for me to financially survive because I'm going to be on an extremely low income lifestyle. I've been living roughly the last eight years on $700 a month. Most people can never do that, but I'm a pretty good planner and I know how to do without. I know how to make do with resources that I can find available around me in new situations. Um, in other words, um, I will pluck something off the side of the road. I will use rocks, I will use trees, branches, you name it. I have hoped to find a homestead property and leave myself at least four years with total financial safety net where I'd need no further income until that time expires. Now, when I first settled in, I said that, you know, I may not have a lot of new clothes. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I didn't have money to spend on clothes all these years. I didn't have money to buy new silverware. Um, as I settle in, though, you'll see that I do have quite a few very nice things. You know, I've done without and bought things over these eight years, but I've also bought a couple of new things since I got the inheritance. And I see them, to me, I see them as investments and work tools. And they're going to either provide me with a future way to earn a living or they're going to go towards rehabilitating me so that I can earn a living. And these nice things, to me, they're a truck, a homestead, a camera, a computer to replace one that was gracious enough to wait until I had my money for seven years before it was knocked off and it died man it served me well for eight years it died one week after i got my money i was very fortunate but i'm gonna tell you what i nursed it that week i had the side off of it and every time the fans stop i did what what you can't do i mean you know when you've cleaned the fan so many times and it's reworked for another year and you clean the fan i've cleaned that fan took my computer apart and cleaned everything out of it all three fans numerous times but it got to the point where this time it just wasn't gonna happen it did, still did not work, so I did what every home handyman has ever done, you kick it. It's how you fix something, you kick it. So I took the back of the screwdriver and I tapped the center of that fan, and I tappity tapped until it started to kick. It started to move, and it started to move, and then it finally moved after I kept hitting it. So, you know, then you know I used it for about 30 minutes and the fan would stop and I'd have to pick up the screwdriver and use the back of it and tap 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 again and, and it would kick on again then I got through that probably till the second week and then I went and got the other computer because actually the money was sitting in the bank and couldn't be touched they had to wait to clear the bank before it could be released to me so <laughs> it was rough getting through those couple of weeks because you know the computer's my life without the computer I have no people no human contact whatsoever and I have no TV, no radio. Um, I'll just be looking at dust on a concrete wall for eight years. And believe me, it doesn't look pretty. It's uh, not normal paint. You can't wash it. it it's a powder-based something. If you wash it, just the paint comes off. <clears throat> and there's never repainting. So, you know, I've mopped the walls twice since I've been here. It, I can't do it again. The last time I bought a mop for 20 bucks, it made it through about one wall and two ceilings, and that was it, and it died. I mean, it just fell apart, and that was a high-quality mop, so I, it is what it is. So anyways, this is my life and my lifestyle, and rehabilitation is definitely a goal of mine. And I have strayed way off of these eight pages nuts that I had, so who knows. I'm trying to skim them to see if there's anything I actually want to include. I knew I needed out of the city for all, this, all these years because of the smog and different things. And I couldn't do it and I, I really worried because I didn't want it to become too late for me to physically handle leaving. 
and I think that this timer's going to run out. So we're going to try.